Growing up within this environment, there's people that are passionate there's people that train hard, there's people that have amazing skills. We get to meet artists and coaches and companies from around the world. And here we are based in this little corner of the earth called Albury. And there's so much happening here that's still connected to this big wide world of circus. I became a fruity because when it first began, Pixie Robinson and Jimbo Robinson went around to the schools and tried to kind of talent scout basically and went and looked for kids that they thought might have some potential or were interested. And we yeah, used to come there and train with Mickey Ashton and different other people, Pixie and Jim Robinson. And then we were really lucky because we got our first international tour invitation to the um, Vancouver Children's Festival, which was in 81. I think there was a bit of a general collective shock from the townspeople of Albury back when we went to Canada. I think people couldn't quite believe that this little bunch of kids from Albury was going to the International Children's Festival. Like, it was like, what? And then there was the tent collapse in Canada. So the first act of the show was the Tower of Chairs. It used to take like 20 minutes. It's quite a long act. So we went, a few of us would go down to the cafe in the park in Canada and in Edmonton and get hot chips and ketchup and come back and then <laughs> on stage and nobody knew that we would do that. And one day we were coming back from the cafe and we could see the band outside the tent. And we're like, oh, that's Frog, what's, what's going on? Oh, there's, that's Mary who's in the act. And we're like, oh my God, what's going on? Anyway, we get there and the tent had been um, evacuated. Faye Stevens was the last one out. She was operating the follow spot and the tent collapsed on the stage. And they just, yeah, just got out in time. We came back from Canada the first time um, and we were, we were put in a street procession down Dean Street. We were all in like open, I think maybe vintage cars. And yeah, we did this procession down Dean Street. And yeah, it was another pretty amazing experience, you know, and then a little reception at the um, Civic Centre and a sausage in bread and, you know, the Lord Mayor and everybody get up and have a little chat and, you know, yeah. From there, it was lots and lots of touring, lots and lots of practice with Jim and Pixie and Mort, Mickey Ashton. I still to this day remember the day he died. We were in Sydney performing. It was an afternoon off and they called us all into the tent and the howling that when Mickey died, the howling that was going across the tent could be heard, I'm sure, all over Glebe. It was, it was an incredible afternoon. It was, yeah, very emotional afternoon. He was the one that taught us, you know, all that really great vaudeville um, knockabout stuff. I mean, it was a pretty kind of magical time. I think especially for me growing up in a, you know, in a country town, it was a little bit of a lifesaver in some ways because it's kind of like, well, you know, you're in this little town and you have sort of visions or imagination that you might be, do something fabulous <laughs> one day. And then the Fruit Flies was there, so it was kind of like great. And I was really lucky because I did the, the Nanjing training project happen with, when the Chinese acrobats came to us to Australia for the first time, which was, again, amazing. So it was the first time a Chinese group had come and, and taught overseas so it was a huge cultural significance really. They taught members of the Flying Fruit Fly Circus, there were circus isles and there were also guests and artists and acrobats and dancers and stuff that came from all over Australia to train and it was pretty intense. I remember we did so many handstands in that first week I couldn't actually use my hands because they were just my muscles were just so pumped I couldn't actually hold a knife and fork. Well, one of the things I learnt in the Nanjing, I learnt how to balance three eggs on top of each other on a chopstick on my nose. And uh, so I you know, spent hours and hours practising with things getting smaller and smaller until we could get balance a chopstick and have to be really, really smooth. I think Perth's probably still quite scarred from it. If you drop an egg, it makes a lot of mess and it gets really stinky when you drop several eggs several times over several months. So. Per, yeah, spent most of the Chinese pro or the Nanjing project in the boys' toilets. 
The Nanjing project changed circus in Australia dramatically. It was a huge, huge project at its time. Really upskilled the fruit flies and really upskilled Australian circus. So we joined just at the end of that project, of the Nanjing project, so we kind of had ch Chinese um, influence in our training until the Russian tra training project and we, yeah, learning whole new skills, things that you've never heard of, it's the first time being in Australia and we were the artists to give it a go. We did this three month intensive and then we went on tour, the Red Alert tour, is yeah, that right? Yep. We did. For five weeks, yeah. I want to say, um, and the, yeah, performing what we'd learnt in that time and you know, being exposed to the different cultures of those trainers and it was amazing. I find it almost impossible to think who I would be without the circus actually because it's been such a big part of my life. I was an incredibly shy child and I know I say that to a lot of people and they go well, what no you're not and without the circus I wouldn't have I suppose had that um, the special thing for your confidence, I think. Mm. I think it, yeah, it gives you a reason to, something that makes you unique and gives you strength within yourself, mm. something. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and without the, yeah, it's just saying, without the circus, I wouldn't have had that. Yeah. And we would, none of us would yeah. have had that. Um, I think, uniqueness. yeah, everybody can find their field, their area where they feel good and, and feel challenged and, yeah, mm. where they fit. I think it changed me, opened up my world but also, I think it opened up my parents and my family's world to something that they wouldn't have had access to, yeah. It's just kind of, in a way, like my whole life. <laughs> like, you know, one of the greatest childhoods ever, you know, growing up with your friends, getting to go on tour, making shows, doing all of that. It was amazing and I think it's kind of one of those places that, you know, it's always like, oh, you can run away to join the circus, but now I always feel like the Fruit Flies is somewhere I can always kind of come home to rather than run away to. It's always been my second home and my second family. And even when I went away and started doing different things that weren't circus orientated, I always had that, this pull and this kind of like heartthrob for circus and Fruit Flies. And so I guess that's kind of like, you know, it has a deep meaning to me. I was part of the Flying Fruit Fly Circus from 1993 to 2002, so 10 years. I come from single mum and she did an amazing job. She gave me everything she could, she gave me and my brother everything she could. But the things that she couldn't I got from fruit flies and my trainers and my friends. In my generation we did do a lot of touring and I think um, a lot of the people I was touring with, as well as our trainers, they end up raising you because you're away from home so much. So we came very close to all the people I was working with and I'm still very close to them now. I consider them my family. I remember being in the Sydney Opera House doing a show. Kim Walker was our director and he kind of came out to us. He's like, you guys have to put on the best show of your lives. Like all of the funding bodies are in the audience. And it definitely wasn't reliant on this particular performance, but he made us feel like it was. And we were like so excited and so like, yes, we've got to do the best show of our lives. And we ran out and we did the best show of our lives and we got the funding and it was all really exciting. And I would also say like the tent seasons that we did, they were like really unforgettable, I guess, like even the Sydney more park season that we did. We were there for a month, we were in caravans, like it was a cast of 32 kids and I don't know how big the whole crew was back then, but it was pretty mega. I think you beat an opening night in that circus tent. I think mm. that's one of my strongest memories of being under the canvas and having the industry come to see us do our thing and have a big celebration afterwards. That was something that really stands out for me. Over the generations, it's turned out, you know, generation after generation of kind of young artists that have gone out and done really cool things and grown up to be amazing people. I think it like shaped and influenced my life, just making me know what I wanted to do and gave me goals that I wanted to, you know, lead towards. My biggest memory in Fruit Flies was probably going over to France with my trainer and two of my partners and going to a circus school there and training, then going to a circus festival and watching so many shows and it really just made me love what we do even more and it, it made me drive towards you know doing this as a career and it gave me a lot more passion. 
So now I'm in Cirque du Soleil. And I'm a teetboard artist. Yeah, it's a dream come true. I became a fruit fly because I just copied him, really. <laughs> I was a little sister, I had to follow him. <laughs> I started doing like aerials and then for some reason I found out that I liked doing hula hoops better and then continued that until I graduated and still doing it now. But I think travelling and just meeting all the people that I've met and like they've become my family now, so that's probably the best part for me. My probably favourite memory of Fruit Flies is a show we did called Encore. It was more of a corporate gig, but for me it was like my first show was like the bigger kid and like along with all these younger kids that for me it was like I had to step up but I'd already been prepared to do that kind of thing without even realising it. And then a lot of those friendships that I formed with like Harry and Cooper started there and we're like really good friends now so that was probably my favourite time. I've met fruities in Sydney and Montreal, you just, you all come together and it's like, oh, we're all fruities. Like, oh, you're a fruity, you're a fruity, I'm a fruity, you're a fruity, fruity, fruity. Yeah. And it's just, you end up just clumping together just in different places around the world. It's yeah. quite funny, actually. Yeah, you can't escape them. <laughs> Being able to work with all these people that we have worked with, it's like helped us on a massive professional level. Like, I, one of the highest things Fruit Flies is known for that I've found is their professionalism and like that's, a lot to do with fruit flies and the people we've got to work with this whole time. After I spent a whole bunch of time in Montreal in Canada, I moved back to Albury. Didn't think I was going to stay as long as I have. It's now almost been three years that I've been back and I, mean, I love it. And I love teaching here. I love existing in this community that we have here in Albury. And I, I get to pass on what I've learnt around the world back to the kids that we have here now. Fruities, I mean, totally set me on a really awesome career path because I get to, you know, perform. But also when I was there, I started my technical training stuff. And now I'm a technical trainee at Hot House, which is just awesome. Um, yeah, so it's totally changed my career path. I, now I want to be a performer. I want to be a technician. I want to make things using both of those skills. And it's really changed that. Fruity is just an amazing bunch of people that I would call a family and they just have so much trust with each other. That's one of the main words I'd say comes with circus. Fruity's is chaos. <laughs> like everyone is just everywhere and doing weirdest stuff. Circus keeps me active and it's not like it's not competitive and you don't have you don't have the stress of having of having to compete to do what you love, you know what I mean? I just um, started doing tumbling and flips and stuff at my house and my dad said, how would you like to go to the circus? And yeah, we moved to Albury so I can join the circus. I just love training, it's all worth it. My favourite thing about the circus is to, like, you get to perform and travel around the place with each other. I've been riding a unicycle for half a year. It's fun to ride and it's fun to learn how to. One of my favourite memories in the circus is probably actually really simple. The first time that I stood on a too high, which is um, standing on someone else's shoulders, I was really scared and as soon as I was up there I literally felt like I was flying. So and I loved it ever since, and that's how I became a flyer. One of my favourite moments was when I was learning the unicycle, because I just had to keep on going. Like when you fall over, you just gotta drag the unicycle back and get on it again. You get to make fun acts, and ride around and do twirly things, and you get to swing each other around by holding hands. I think I will continue with circus when I get older. I really enjoy circus because you know, I feel like I can trust everyone there. I'm constantly learning new stuff and pushing myself. My favourite memory would have been when I was up on the stage and everyone was just applauding. My favourite thing to do is aerials because I like climbing stuff and doing lots of tricks. This year I was an understudy for the junk show. And yeah, it was very, a very good experience being able to do that. I loved it. Well, you get a lot of energy when you perform, like no energy that you get when you're doing anything else. It's just all of a sudden you get this big rush of adrenaline. I loved it. One of my favourite parts about doing circus is touring. 
I did them with my dad and so it, was, it just made it better because I wasn't alone. It's pretty special to perform with my son. Uh, so it's sort of like having a little mini me. You definitely get a certain feeling in your stomach, like sometimes depending on what you're doing, you'll feel scared about what you're doing, depending on the tricks, what acts, the music, lighting, anything. Just whatever happens, happens. You can't change it. Fruities has definitely changed me over the years I've been here. It just changes you in every way possible. 